They say he was a man obsessed, chasing memories, faces, scents. Yet amidst the chaos, he could only follow his heart. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my first video for the Witcher TV series. If you don't know what's going on, Netflix greenlit a Witcher TV series based on the novels. Those take place before the story picks up during the video game. So if you played Witcher 3 or any of the other games, then you have a broad idea for the mythology. But all that stuff happens after what happens in the books. So I'll just do a brief explainer for what's going on, what the status of the project is, and when you can probably expect episodes to drop. But remember, it's Netflix, so it takes a little longer to premiere, but they drop all the episodes at once. It'll probably be 8 to 13 episodes, which is usually the range for the really big budget series like this, but think of it as Netflix's version of Game of Thrones. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll do videos for it the same way I would do for Game of Thrones about the mythology, history videos, character videos. There's so much that we can talk about. It's still relatively early in the development on the project. So it's not like we're going to be seeing episodes till bare minimum 2019, 2020. It's going to be a big series. But think about how many years Game of Thrones or the Lord of the Rings film series were in pre-production before you actually got to see footage of that stuff. The showrunner Lauren Hisrich, just this morning as I'm posting this video, it's February 24th, 2018, turned in her latest draft of the pilot script to Netflix for notes. They haven't said how they're going to produce the series, but it's probably going to be the same way they produce the Marvel Netflix series or Stranger Things. If you're not familiar with the showrunner, she's coming off of Daredevil and The Defenders, so she's been spending most of her time in the Marvel Universe. They didn't say whether or not they're going to start working on all the scripts, whether or not they're going to hire a writer's room and start banging out the rest of the episodes right away. It sounds like Netflix is just looking at the pilot before they start casting the actors and then they start hiring a writer's room to bang out the other episodes. But usually with Netflix, once they approve those first couple of scripts and they find out what their budget is going to be and they start casting, they just start making episodes. They don't wait for a pilot episode before greenlighting everything. If you haven't been a fan of the series for a long time, there was a movie in a TV series that they tried to make in the early 2000s. There was a movie in 2001 then a TV series that tried to tell that story in 13 episodes. Both were kind of regarded as being bad by fans. So you don't absolutely have to watch those. They don't have anything to do with the series that Netflix is doing. Think of them like you would think of the really bad Batman films. Like, there's a really popular character, many different adaptations. Some of the movies have been good, some of them not so good. Getting into a little of the mythology, there are a couple really big things that they'll probably hit during that first season. Because it's taking place with the books, and if you're not sure what the reading order is, there's a series of short stories, then there's the main novels, and then there are a couple spin-off novels. And for the most part, you can read those in the order that they were published because they're all chronological, with a few exceptions. So it's Last Wish, Sword of Destiny, Blood of Elves, Time of Contempt, Baptism of Fire, The Swallow's Tower, Lady of the Lake, and Season of Storms. But during that last book, Season of Storms, they deal with some prequel material, so they jump around in the timeline a little bit. So it gets a little confusing, but just start with the short stories, then do the Blood of Elves saga, and then you can read the spin-off books if you want. For the most part, they'll probably tackle this chronologically. Geralt of Rivia, as a child, given to the School of the Wolf, becomes a Witcher, taking the dangerous potions, going through the trials, then developing Ciri's storyline, who appears during most of the games. So you're probably familiar with most of the characters that will pop up during the novels and they'll do during the series. But because I imagine them doing five to seven seasons, I don't know if he's going to meet Ciri during the first season or it's just going to be the process of him becoming the Witcher. I don't know what the pacing is going to be and how fast they're going to burn through the mythology. Since the showrunner is coming off of Marvel series, Daredevil, Defenders, and there's a big complaint about the way they pace those, Hopefully they'll pick that up with the Witcher series and he'll become a Witcher before the end of season one and we'll learn about the Ciri character, maybe meet her in some fashion. So there may be time jumps, they may do his Witcher training in flashbacks so they could actually do Ciri on the show because she sort of becomes his adoptive daughter via the Law of Surprises, but he first learns about her when she's still in her mother's womb. So it's kind of hard to do a character like that on a TV show if you don't jump around in time. If you've only played that last game, then the Wild Hunt is like the main antagonist of that series. The Niflgardian Empire is really like the big bad of this epic saga of stories. So they slowly expand like the Roman Empire. I don't want to make too many comparisons to Game of Thrones because the mythology of both stories is so different. But this is 
Probably one of the coolest things about the Witcher game series is that Charles Dance, Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones, does the voice for Emperor Amir during The Witcher 3. Your Imperial Majesty, Geralt of Rivia, and... Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon, Queen of Sintra, Princess of Bruges, and Duchess of Sutton. Heiress to Innes Ard Skellig and Innes Ann Skellig, and suzerain of Atra and Abiara. Tyrion of the House Lannister. Stand accused by the Queen Regent of Regicide. Did you kill King Joffrey? Wouldn't it be so cool if they could get him to play that character on the TV series? You could make some Kyburn references because he deals with things that seem like magic, albeit they're really science that just isn't understood yet, like raising the dead back to life. So during The Witcher, the trial of the grasses is the process by which someone becomes a witcher while they're at the school of the wolf. The people there practiced a lot of genetic experimentation and a lot of potion lore and created a process by which to turn someone into a superhuman, which Geralt did to gain all of his superpowers and his abilities as a witcher. So he trained to be a really good fighter, but in addition to that, took a whole bunch of crazy potions and went through a bunch of experiments to become something even more. It gives him enhanced abilities, enhanced longevity, but it also takes some of his humanity away from him. Like the more powerful you get, the less human you become. The series itself contains all manner of magical creatures, so you have everything from vampires to dragons to demons, mages, wizards, witches, all kinds of stuff. And while the Niflgardians are trying to conquer the known world, you also have a lot of the minor principalities that are warring with each other, which is a little bit like Westeros before Aegon's conquest, where you have a bunch of different kings of smaller states and then someone comes along trying to conquer all of them. Pretty safe bet that they're going to tackle some of the Amir storyline. If you're not familiar with that, Amir is one of the princes of Niflgaard. He's cursed. He changes into this really crazy animal. He's banished. Geralt helps him. Eventually, Amir falls in love with someone. They have a child. That child is Ciri. But because Geralt saved his life, he's granted a wish. He invokes the law of surprise, that which you do not know about yet. And that is Ciri in his wife's womb. So because Ciri's mother is a source, like she is someone that has magical affinity, Ciri is like this special child that has extra magical affinity that Geralt then recruits to become a future witcher. Which is kind of the funny way that they recruit people to become part of the witcher order. Like it's not something that you sign up for. Usually it's done through the law of surprise. Like if they help save someone and they just happen to have a child on the way, they invoke the law of surprise, which essentially makes them the ward of this child. So that's why Ciri is sort of like Geralt's adoptive daughter. And then obviously later in the series, Amir becomes the emperor of Niflgaard, turns evil and starts killing a bunch of people and becomes the antagonist of the series. Like I said, the Niflgaardians are the main antagonists of the entire Witcher saga. So the early short stories and the early novels are really as much about the origin of Ciri as well as the origin of Geralt. So that's kind of how I'm choosing to think about the series. Like most people, when they think about the Witcher, they think about Geralt. But you could argue that Ciri is also just as important because of her bloodline and the way she's connected to the Emperor of Niflgaard. Get used to it. Before long, every soul from Nilfgaard to the Dragon Mountains will kneel before you. I did not expect you to keep your word, Witcher. So like I said, if you've seen any of my Game of Thrones videos, I'll be doing stuff like that for the Witcher TV series, but it's still so early in the process that we're not going to be seeing footage for a long time. So once we get more details about who the cast is going to be and when they're going to start filming and when they're going to pick up in the timeline, how they're going to deal with some of that backstory, I'll do more videos. But let me know if you have any special requests or if there's anything special that you want me to do for a Witcher giveaway. Once those regular videos start, I'll start doing that giveaway too. But while you wait for everything, click here for brand new Game of Thrones and click here for that brand new Infinity War promo. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.